morning, everyone. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> Dr. Roy made this calm card with the title, Turn Your Business Ideas into Reality. It is a signature that the Caribbean American Chamber of Commerce always been helping to launch small businesses and creating a lot of different partnerships since 1985. And people tend to reach out to us because they know we can provide business opportunities during our networking and we can provide assistance in many, many, many ways. Today, I would love to commend and thank all of you that are online, especially I see that we have one of our consultants who function with Khaki as program manager over a number of years, and that's Sabra Richardson. And um, she, this true technology, even though she's international, here we are, Sabra. Hola! Good morning, all. And um, welcome to, welcome back, I should say, to our networking event, albeit uh, through uh, the use of technology and through the use, in this case, of Zoom. Uh, my name is Harry Perryman. Good morning, and uh, welcome to the first, I believe, uh, annual Khaki Network meeting. And I say the first in a, in a very conservative way because we used to have these, these meetings very, very often. And I believe that since 2020, we have not had a khaki networking meeting. Of course, we have the chair, we have others that, that uh, can correct me if I'm wrong. And of course, the reason for that is very obvious. The reason why we have not convened and come together uh, had to do with one of the biggest crises that we have faced in our lifetime, certainly in my lifetime. Who would have thought in 2019, at the end of 2019, when many of us as small businesses had so much hope for the future, we were looking forward to a new millennium, 2020, and, and new, new vision and new direction in which to take our organization. And then, as fate would have it, COVID-19, a global pandemic, took its course and devastated not only our local communities, but the world community. But you know, we are a resilient people, and we are never going to let our misfortune bring us down. We are never going to let the unforeseen discourage us from our mission and our vision in life to be successful entrepreneur and to be successful members of society. So, as many of you, I also have witnessed many of my colleagues, my business partner. She lost a mother in 2019. She lost her husband in 2020 due to COVID. Okay? We lost the great Dr. Roy Hastick, the, the leader and the, the, the leader and founder of Khaki. And this is one of the most important reasons why today is so important, is that we have to come back and continue the legacy of Khaki. Bringing small businesses together, supporting small businesses, advocating for small businesses, MWBE, uh, disenfranchised business, immigrant businesses. That is the lifeblood, not only of New York, but of the United States, and I would say around the world. So today, you know, I just want to highlight a couple of things. I've done, so I, you know, I'm, at Rutgers University, I do uh, statistical analysis on communities, on small businesses, and on organizations, non-for-profit organizations, and the faith base to really quantify, both from a quantitative uh, perspective and also from a qualitative perspective, why it is that somehow we always come up short 
when it, you know, not all of us, some of us are very prosperous as, as entrepreneurs and as small businesses, but overall, we are always sometimes just hanging on, just trying to make ends meet. And now when you add the COVID-19 pandemic, it really has been overwhelmingly devastating to the, to the black and brown community, to minority-owned businesses, to MWBEs. And then the question is, well, how do we come back? What do we need to do in order to, number one, sustain our businesses and to make it flourish? So I did a couple of surveys during this COVID-19 just to gauge and just to be able to quantify some of the key areas uh, of that, that has been the hardest for us, right? And a couple of things came, came to the forefront. African-American businesses have, on African-American people in general, have suffered almost two to one in terms of their, their, their rep population representat representation in business failures, in health, uh, uh, in the negative impact that COVID-19 has had on our community, and in the educational deficits that COVID-19 has highlighted due to the fact that the technology that we needed to, to pivot away from in-class learning to uh, 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 Zoom and distant learning, we just were not prepared. So when we talk about how are we going to come back, we hear the governor talk about building back New York stronger. We hear the mayor talking about building back New York and, and highlighting the deficits of, of African Americans and minorities. We talk about the, the, the fact that we're going to reinvest in our community. So my uh, vision of coming back is to not only look at uh, correcting some of the the, 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 the ills that, that, that has happened to us, but to also envision our small business and position our small business to prosper. We cannot just say, okay, we're going to rebuild our businesses to the level where it was. We have to look forward and look broadly at multiple opportunities, right? Uh, COVID-19 should be an op a, a pivotal time in our business vision. COVID-19 should, 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 when we look back historically at this, this global pandemic, we should be able to pinpoint what it is that we have confronted and what it is that we're doing dif differently to build back stronger. So let me tell you what my observation has highlighted as far as small business operations, right? So for the first time, for the first time in my lifetime, for the first time in, in the history of, of America, right? Through the, um, uh, through the, uh, the CARES Act and now under the Biden administration, the American Recovery Act, the, the, the government has provided trillions of dollars, $1.9 trillion in recovery stimulus funding, okay? And a lot of that funds include funding for small businesses, funding for uh, uh, the healthcare community, funding to rebuild our community from a business perspective bigger and stronger. So the million dollar question that I have for small businesses are we going to be part of that growth? Are we planning for that growth? Are we positioning our small businesses to, to take advantage of all the opportunities that are out there? So I ask small businesses the basic question when we talk about the PPP and most recently the restaurant revitalization program. We we, uh, we interviewed over 150 small business restaurants, mainly African-American restaurants, to find out that less than 20% of them had really targeted and taken advantage of that opportunity. Many of them have said, well, we didn't know about it in time. And yes, 
the truth be told, it was it came online May third, and I think this Monday they closed that opportunity. That's twenty nine billion dollars. We suffered disproportionately. Whether you ran an ice cream parlor or a hot dog store or a uh, uh, you know an entertainment bar, okay. We, as, as minorities, as MWB, as small businesses, as immigrant-based businesses, we qualify for all these opportunities. And yet, in, in my survey, less than 20% of the restaurants and the food handlers that I talked to even bother to apply for it. One of the easiest applications under this new stimulus plan under the Biden-Harris administration, okay? So these are the, the, the shortcomings. These are some of the shortcomings that I see. Now, what are some of the reasons people gave? They didn't have the paperwork in place. They didn't have payroll in place. And, of course, the PPP, they wanted you to demonstrate that you, you know, everything is about documentation. And one of the things that we, we in the past have taught small businesses is make sure that you have all your documentation in place. Make sure that you have all your records in place. Make sure that you are in compliance. That is one particular area that was very, very hard on small businesses, starting with the first round of the PPP. Many of them didn't have we don't have payroll. We pay people under the table, and we we do 1099, and we just you know uh, we don't keep record, and we don't have an official accounting uh, process within our organizations. So those are shortcomings that we must correct. We cannot sit by and wait for something to happen to us. We have to be proactive. We have to anticipate problems. We have to anticipate obstacles, and we have to have a plan B so that we can then at least soften the blows, whatever those things, you know, uh, uh, have an impact on us. So uh, we talk about registering organization. One of the quickest way for small businesses, nonprofits, the faith-based community to get involved, right, there is over $100 billion that's earmarked just for the nonprofits and the faith-based community. My question is, right, again, we're using quantitative measure. We're looking at the data. To me, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it, okay? So I want to know, just like we talked about the restaurant, how many of our small businesses have taken advantage of the $29 billion? Likewise, I want to know amongst our members and starting with our members, are we ready? Are we prepared? Do we have all the necessary documents? Government is such that it's a bureaucracy and they want, they'll give you, they'll put aside, you know, when, when you talk about $1.9 billion, that's a lot of money, okay? However, no one is going to knock on your door and give you a barrel of money. You have to have these systems in place. You have to know what the DUNS number is. Many of the small businesses that I talk to, right, the nonprofits ran by immigrants, ran by women-owned businesses, in serving in minority communities, they didn't have that in place, right? So without the DUNS number, you can't have a SAM account. Without the SAM account, you can't get a cage code. Without a cage code and the SAM account, you can't lock into the mega depository of grant money, grant.gov, right? Fedbusinessopportunity.gov. Uh, on the New York side, we have the passport. We have most people that I talked to didn't have a PIP account, right? Payment information portal account. They didn't have the, the HHS account set up. Those are some of the things that we can correct. And through our network, through our collaboration, through workshops like these, right? If the goal is to close economic disparity gaps amongst our people, 
If that's the goal, then we have to do whatever it takes. One thing that I know is that we are a very talented, community-focused, and community-committed bunch of people, okay? And especially when you look at the diaspora and the talent, the collective talent that exists within the diaspora, within individuals who, who have the can-do spirit, we are not leveraging that talent. We are not leveraging the, co the collaborative network. We're not putting these networks together so that we can address issues, economic issues, international issues that, that have affected us in a very negative way throughout the Caribbean, throughout Latin America, throughout Africa. We have to be that voice. So as we build back, as we put back the foundation, as we envision what the, the future possibilities are going to be, we have to address all the easy things. The things that I enumerated are easy. In other words, if you're a nonprofit and you don't do your 990, it never used to be uh, 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 that law. About eight, nine years ago, if you didn't make, if you didn't raise $25,000 or above, you didn't have to file. And then they changed the law. And as, that, as the law has changed, it, is, it behooves us. It is our obligation and responsibility to be knowledgeable about those changes and to be in compliance. So now, 80% of all the nonprofits that I talk to are not ready. They're not ready. So if there's a million dollar grant sitting at the table right this minute, they can't qualify. And yet, they operate in minority communities. They have the capacity to serve the people in those communities, but they're not ready. They're not prepared. They didn't know. Someone didn't say to them, listen, you need to file your 990 easy at minimum. At minimum. Because all the government wants to know is, what was your revenue stream? Did you have a, a, a funding operation? Were funds donated to your organization? And we call that generally compliance. Okay? So if, if those things are lacking, then we operationally are lacking. Right? We cannot do anything without funding. Anything without dollars and cents. The New York State budget, the most comprehensive, forward-thinking New York State budget ever, ever. And from the governor on down to all the legislatures who were involved in passing that budget, they'll tell you they've never passed a $212 billion budget. And a lot of the funding there is, you know, government can't do everything. A lot of the funding is to engage nonprofits and people like you on this panel yeah. in workforce development, in youth guidance and mentoring, in technology expansion, in bringing back, look how vulnerable we were during COVID-19 because we outsourced 25 years ago every single thing so that the 1% can make bigger profits. We outsourced all the, the, the things that we needed, such as masks and hospital gowns. And so when a crisis, when we were facing a crisis, we have to now go around the world. And in many cases, to our number one and number two adversaries to say, listen, can we give you $100 billion so that you can give us something to save our people? When we build back better, that should never, ever again happen. We have people here who are in the fashion industry. We can manufacture those materials right here in Brooklyn, in New York, in New Jersey, in the United States, and put people to work. Build back our community. 
expand our business operations, right? And those of us who are not very versed in terms of how to do that, that is where, and I'm going to borrow from Dr. Roy Hastig, networking works. But I would say to that, I would add to that, networking only works if you make it work, okay? The days of just shaking hands at a meeting and, and, and you know, uh, convening a meeting and then adjourning a meeting without any deliverables has to be passé. It has to be something that we do in the past, right? So coming back to, for most businesses, most people, their mortgage their entire life, myself included. I've heard many, many stories here today to start their dream, to build a business. That is the most important investment that many of us have ever made. And yet, when we're facing a crisis, it all goes down the drain. Okay? Due to lack of planning, due to lack of strategic positioning, due to lack of knowledge. Most of, of my, my observations has been that people just don't know. The PPP, fear. There were so many people, black and, 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 and immigrant people, non-English speakers, they were so afraid. They didn't know. When, pe when we don't know, we just tend to not do anything. Look at the $29 billion for the, uh, the, um, the, in, the, uh, the, the restaurants, okay? So, and, and we did, Ms. Allen and I, we called and we said, please, please, put in an application. It's a grant. It's a grant. It's free money. And all you have to do is demonstrate the facts. You have suffered. New York City was closed. New York State was closed. There were restrictions put on businesses, right? Those are the facts that would qualify you for those grants. The purpose of the grants is to help you rebuild and to build back the economy and to build back the nation. And that means that each and every one of us must play a part in that endeavor. Each and every one of us must be an active participant in the revitalization of America. And that includes the minorities, that includes the immigrants, that includes the MWBEs. Get those certification. Why do you think that we have over the years, and I know Khaki has been involved in MWBE advocacy uh, 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 through the uh, State Assembly woman, uh, Bouchette, who is the chair, okay? Why are these people going through the trouble to ensure that those certifications exist so that we can take advantage of them if we are not taking advantage of them, right? So as we build back stronger, those issues must be addressed. And for those who are complete novices about everything, that's okay. That is exactly why we have the Caribbean American Chamber of Commerce and Industry. We are a resource. If you want to know, can you qualify for a bid? Can you qualify for a grant? Are there programs out there for you? $1.9 trillion worth of programs. One final note I'm going to make about those of you who are running nonprofits and 501c3 organizations. This is not the time to sit on the sideline, right? When, when they talk about $14, $20 billion going into the healthcare industry, there are grants right now just to empower non-for-profit organizations to help vaccinate the country. Because in order for us to come back, there's still people, you know, even in, in my family, right? When the governor talked about there's a decline and a hesitancy <laughs> amongst young people, he's talking about my daughter. And mother doesn't want to take it, and my daughter says she's not going to take it, right? This is a kid that wants to be a forensic scientist, a straight-A student. Right? So we have to do. The faith-based community got to get engaged. The 501c3, they got to get engaged. They got to step up their game. Right? And, and this is where government position is, right? If you need the dollars, I'll give you the dollars. Okay? 
but help us. That's how important that is. Because we cannot fully open up unless the nation, we, we cannot afford uh, 600,000 deaths in the United States. Right? We cannot afford that. And so whatever it takes, whatever partnership it takes, whatever opportunity, and this is where I started and I said, when we look back at COVID-19, are we going to define the many opportunity that has been created? Right? When we talk about building back better, are we going to focus on our young people? Right? Are we going to focus on, when we say fashion and we talk about the economic out, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, engagement of developing countries, that's a win-win situation. Okay? We are using the talent in the United States, the talent of the diaspora, in order to have a global impact and in order to build back better and stronger. And so I thank you for the opportunity. I know it was a little winded a little bit, but I thank you for the opportunity to at least give you my, if you will, motivational speak. We are going to be okay, people. We're going to be fine, right? We have survived this, but we will thrive, okay? So let's come together, let's work together, and let's make it happen. So, um, in the interest of time, I'm not going to go through a lot, but it is important for you to know that in our midst today, we have someone who served as the public relations representative under the management of the city, the Caribbean Chamber of Commerce, Derek Noel, and me at the Flatbush Caton Market for the vendors. She's here with us today. I would like her to stand and just wave or say a few words. Miss Carlene Robinson. Thank you for having me here. Mm -hmm. It's a pleasure to be a vendor at the Flatbush Caton Vendors Market. And uh, we are so grateful as vendors. They gave us 17 months and uh, because of Dr. Una Clark who paved the way for us, and then Kaki got involved, Anna Walker got involved, Derek Noel got involved, 17 years through it all, we are still standing. And guess what? We are moving back in a couple of months to Flatbush Caton Vendors Market in the And that is so encouraging to all of us who are in businesses. Through it all, we are still standing and standing strong. So to God be the glory, great things he has done. And we just have to keep on keeping on positively. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, Miss Carlene. Uh, Miss Carlene didn't say much about herself, but she... Um, is the person that has the music booth at the market and very much connected to the arts and culture of the Caribbean diaspora and everything, especially with VP Records. Um, we know that Beres Hammond just got into the Hall of Fame and they, her husband, who was also a vendor but passed away, He's the one that brought all these artists along with Derek. Mm -hmm. When Derek bring everybody from the Parang and everything, they are the ones that brought them to the vendor's market. And also, congrats to Sabra also. She and Derek took a big group of people to Carnival. No, to, 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 to Ghana. Not Ghana, to, to, to um, no, Senegal. 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 The yes. Carnival in yes. Senegal. Yes. So these are some of the things these are some of the things we've done over the years and in collaboration. So we're looking forward to doing more of that. I'm glad that Mr. Perryman spoke to you highly about our plans. As we go forward, we'll be having some grants of our own. I can say this much now. 
we will be collaborating with at least four unions. We will be collaborating with the Brooklyn Navy Yard in two aspects, specifically the STEM program and the work on the um, employment center that they have to recruit and hire those that we recommend. So we are moving forward and upward only in the best fashion ever. And as I made mention to our former, one of the former business managers, program managers, her title as a whole, her name of her business is simply budgeting. And today I just wanted to share with you all that we encompassed this morning boils down to one key. Whether you're in business for yourself, in business for someone, or managing your home, it comes down to one thing, and that is the business plan. Now, as you go along in life, you have to focus on everything that connects to you. Nothing happened or nothing is more important than you. So, for example, the title business plan carries a you in it. You cannot spell business without your involvement. So be conscious of that. And here at the uh, Caribbean Chamber of Commerce, as we continue to offer these programs, especially now, this new adventure that we have, three workshops in one we are going to do this all the time so we can maximize on what we have to offer. Yes, thank you, yes. So the business plan is simply charting your, you see, we can't spell your without you. Course, we can't spell course without you. To success, we cannot spell success without your involvement. So the road for me coming to this table and this moment with over 35 years of construction experience and many other things, I say to you wholeheartedly, the road to success is always under construction, always. And that's why even though today is holiday season and everybody's traveling, we here at Khaki are loyal and committed to be sure that we can encourage all of you to continue on this road. Give yourselves a round of applause.